Welcome to Sim UK. Today I'm going to tell you the truth about Virgin Media and the Hub 3. The Hub 3 was officially released at the beginning of 2016. I was completely convinced by all the rhetoric and the bravado that Virgin Media customer services read to me from their scripts. I was convinced that the Hub 3 was going to be the answer to all of my problems. Instead, it dramatically added to them. At release, the Hub 3 suffered with the following serious problems. The easy installation frequently failed, leaving many without broadband for hours or even days. The UI was ugly and extremely slow, and there were naming duplications throughout. You could not change the DHCP configuration and there were many other bugs and issues including sessions dropping out and configurations not taking effect or being removed without your permission. The Hub 3 also lacked some features that had always been previously present in Virgin Media Hubs and often were desired and perhaps even required within a family home. Security password algorithms were and still are irrevocably bugged and the password field to log in was not starred out and there was the internal corruption of stored passwords. Port forwarding was completely broken. It did not work at all, and Virgin Media had also decided to restrict access to a range of ports, including those for FTP and some required for Xbox. The Hub 3 also has a less powerful Wi-Fi signal strength than the Super Hub 2 AC and even the Super Hub 2. It also has a smart switch management system, which seems to favour the slower 2.4 GHz over the 5 GHz at every opportunity. This might well be due to the weaker signal strength. And if your local exchange was an Aris CMTS, then modem mode was completely unusable and would restart every 25 minutes. This meant you have no choice but to use the Hub 3 in router mode. Virgin Media did quietly, but not publicly, acknowledge these issues and confirmed that a firmware fix was on the way. This was back in March 2016, but the firmware update did not even begin to roll out until December 2016. So for eight months, customers suffered whilst Virgin Media fixed and tested their firmware updates. But Virgin Media gave very few progress reports, despite frantic customer requests, and worse still, they continued to push the Hub 3 onto unsuspecting customers, promoting all of its wonderful advantages despite knowing it was in a terrible and at times unusable state. Doesn't that strike you as odd and incredibly disrespectful for all customers? That's why I made my original Virgin Media Hub 3 videos, to try and warn and help you guys. It's also why I'm making this video today, because things have changed a bit. In the month of December 2016, the firmware updates finally started to roll out across the country. The most serious of issues were resolved, but it also introduced some new issues and did not do enough to fix others. The key fix for me meant that I could finally put the Hub 3 into modem mode and it wouldn't switch off every 25 minutes. That is exactly what I did. I bought a brilliant Asus router and I jammed that Hub 3 into modem mode and I haven't looked back. It did take a few attempts though to get modem mode to work as the password corruption issue was still present, requiring numerous hard resets in order to even gain access to the Hub 3. Finally, it had to be configured remotely by customer services in India, who after two hours finally managed it, but suggested that overheating was the cause and that the Hub 3 should be shut down for one hour for every 22 hours of use. Since I got the Hub 3 into modem mode, I have left it like that and highly recommend that you at least consider doing the same thing. I recommend Asus routers over all else. Even the dated models are very, very good, and I will complete a review on my own Asus that I started months ago, just as soon as I can. Unfortunately, putting the Hub 3 into modem mode is not the silver bullet. I'll explain why in a moment. Port forwarding also works since the firmware update, although there is a new issue now that requires you to add your ports in ascending order. An example of this would be if you added two ports and then later decided you wanted to add a third, if that third is lower than either of the other two port numbers, you'll have to remove them all, restart the router, and add all three again in ascending numerical order. So that would be more of a semi-fix than a fix, pretty much, or a Virgin Media special. Unfortunately, that is about it. 
None of the other issues have been addressed or resolved. And even worse than that, a new massive issue has come to light. The Intel Puma 6 chipset has a significant issue with lag spikes and packet loss. Let me be clear on this point. This is an issue with Intel Puma 6's chipset. It also affects other routers with the same chipset inside. It's not directly associated with Virgin Media. Intel are aware of the issue and are working towards a solution. But there are suggestions that a solution cannot be found. Intel remain positive and defiant, and tests are ongoing. The Puma 6 lag spike is significant and will affect everybody with a Hub 3, even in modem mode, albeit a little bit less. The cable modem can easily be taken offline in a denial of service type attack, even to the point of crashing. This is done simply by handling a relatively low level of traffic on multiple ports. This is a significant fault. It appears that the high latency spikes are due to the CPU reaching its limits and performing a high priority maintenance task every few seconds. This briefly occupies the CPU and in turn causes a momentary spike in latency of about 200 milliseconds or more, and some data packets end up being dropped. As annoying as this most recent discovery is, it will pale into complete insignificance when you hear this next bit. So prepare yourself. Reports strongly suggest that Virgin Media knew about the Intel Puma 6's issues back in 2015. Intel and Virgin Media have had more than two years to fix this serious bug, and as yet have not managed to do it. Worse still, all of the previously mentioned problems with the Hub 3 were also identified in 2015 prior to the official release date, and yet Virgin Media continue to push this Hub 3 out on unsuspecting customers. As yet, Virgin Media have offered no apology, no compensation, not even a reduction in price for installation. And I've also heard from a number of you that Virgin Media are now sending out almost threatening letters and emails that state that your old internet modem will be stopped working and that you must order a free Hub 3. Despite the term free, some who have contacted Virgin Media found that they were going to be charged as much as $14.99, with an additional $14.99 to pay if an engineer was required to attend. Now I will ask you the same question. Doesn't that strike you as odd and incredibly disrespectful to Virgin Media customers? So what the heck is it about this broken and buggy Hub 3 that is so appealing to Virgin Media? Some of my suggestions are going to be thought provoking and I ask you to let me know in the comments section below what you think might be the real reason for this. It is my belief that based on the device I received back in 2016, Virgin Media might initially have been using reconditioned Aris TG2492S-CE devices. A business focused router which was used across Virgin Media's European business customers successfully for years. It would certainly explain the lack of desired family features and would be very cost effective for Virgin Media. If you're going to ask for a Hub 3, I would highly recommend that you ask for the black finish. The chances are they are more likely to be new. Virgin Media are also using the Hub 3 to provide public Wi Fi hotspots. It is reported that over 100,000 customer routers have already been opted in by default. Virgin Media proclaim that this does not in any way affect customer paid for broadband speeds. But I'm not so sure I trust anything that Virgin Media say to me anymore. If you find that you have been opted in, you should receive an email from Virgin Media and have the option to opt out. There is no official confirmation that I can find about this, but the most sensible suggestion I have seen about how this could possibly work suggests that your broadband is actually connecting at a higher speed than you pay for, and that that additional amount is then reserved for the Wi-Fi hotspot. As we now know that the Intel Puma 6 chipset suffers with CPU overload, do you think that possibly your own paid for internet speeds might be affected? Not to mention that the additional Wi-Fi connections will presumably increase Wi-Fi congestion. A heads up for you smart folks who retain the Superhub 2AC. In my opinion, that is the best Virgin Media router available at this time. This hotspot feature is scheduled to head your way by the end of 2017. Hooray for Virgin Media! I am planning on making a detailed comparison between the Superhub 2AC and Virgin Media's Hub 3, so keep your eyes open for that. Although I've heard that Virgin Media are now refusing 
to send out Super Hub 2 ACs to anybody, even if you're having significant Hub 3 issues. The Hub 3 also has known issues with the following devices, Sonos, Google Chrome, Amazon Fire TV, and a large selection of smart TVs of varying brands. Super duper nice work there, Virgin Media. Wonderful stuff. Really impressed. Top of the list. You're amazing. I can't think of anybody I'd rather be with. So what are our best options then? It's a tricky one, isn't it? If you've already got the Hub 3, then I recommend you stick it into modem mode and buy yourself a decent router. Or if you can, there might be an avenue where you can get hold of a Super Hub 2 AC. That by far is probably your best option. If you do have the Super Hub 2 AC already and you're not looking for anything more than 200 megabits per second download, then stick with that because that's the best hub that Virgin Media have at the moment. And if you find that you've been opted into the hotspot arena, request to be removed. I think that as all Virgin Media customers are going to be affected by this in some way, we should really consider pressuring Virgin Media and demand some answers, an apology, and perhaps even some compensation. There is so much to cover regarding Virgin Media and the Hub 3, I really couldn't fit it all into this video without turning it into a fully fledged documentary. Now I know not everybody has experienced the same issues or at least to the same level of severity, but the issues are there and they exist for everyone with a Hub 3. I will continue to try and track progress and gather information about things, and I will do my utmost to keep you informed via videos here on SimUK. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.